Time for a fish room update, first one of the new year. Stay tuned. Hey YouTube, it's Brian and I'm coming at you today with uh, the first fish room update of 2018. This is January. And I um, thought I would get a fish room update out to you. This one is actually going to include um, feeding of each tank. And I'll show you which Southern Delight fish food I feed. The reason I'm doing that is I get asked quite a bit which Southern Delight food is good for which fish and that type of thing. So I'll try to do my best to uh, illustrate that in this video. Obviously it's not going to cover all the foods because there's some foods that I just don't feed. I don't have the type of fish like the fancy goldfish or the small koi, things like that, or I just don't have fish that at this point are uh, eating the, uh, the particular food. But I'll try to cover as many as I can. Um, thank you to everybody that subscribes. If you're new to this channel, make sure you go hit that subscribe button to uh, so you don't miss uh, the next videos that I have coming. And if you're interested in purchasing Southern Delight fish food, I'm a bulk retailer. Um, I sell it online. I'll have my email address below where you can contact me to set up an order. All right, we'll get started actually over here and just go through each tank and how things are doing. And then I'll show you what I'm feeding each tank. But this is the Mota well, Grow Out Tape. These are Paracroma Motaguensis. These are real Blanco from Sean Hyden's line. Um, there's probably 30 of them in here. I, if you remember, I got these uh, from James Randall a few months back. They're growing really well, doing um, awesome. And what I've been feeding these guys is, um, well, up until recently, the Southern Delight Marine Mix. Even though this is marketed towards saltwater, this is an awesome food for fry that are getting to be big enough to take a pellet, but not big enough to take small cichlid. But at any rate, um, these guys are mostly big enough for the small cichlid now, so I'll just go ahead and put some in there. And uh, you guys can see them just go nuts for it here. They're a little spooked out by me um, being in front of them here with the camera, I guess, because usually they just go crazy. But. Uh, see some of them are eating it. I'm going to put a little bit more in. That's actually the marine mix I put in this time. You can see it's a lightly sinking food. Down below here, I've got, it's hard to see, I've got uh, another Moda Grow Out that's a little bit bigger than these guys. Here he is, he likes to hide under this filter. Um, I've been feeding him Southern Delight Power Feed. Um, I might get back to that towards the end of the video. The bottle's over in the other end of the fish room, so I'm not going to walk over and get that right now. But anyway, um, so uh, the flower horn, uh, he's still doing good. This guy is a 9.9 .9 Comfa. Um, I feed him a uh, large cichlid, and then I also put in um, some veggie, here's the large cichlid, veggie krill, and then sometimes I feed him color as well. The veggie krill is for the loaches that are in the tank. Um, so if you've got loaches or some bottom feeding type fish, veggie krill is a great fish. You can see he just loves the large cichlid. And then we'll dump in some veggie curl here. I'm not gonna feed the color right now. I just do that as a supplement once in a while. And the loaches go nuts over the veggie curl. Some of these loaches are big enough where they'll actually take the large cichlid too. So it's kind of fun to watch. 
Uh, down below is uh, the Midas pair. They are getting ready to spawn again. They've been showing a lot of behavior lately. You can see her tube is partially down. Um, I feed them also the large cichlid. They don't like it when I'm right in front of their tank um, filming. So I'm going to back up a little to show you them eating it. Yeah, they're doing real well. I've got some fry growing out from these guys over on the other end of the fish room over here. I'll show you that later. Um, and like I say, they're ready to spawn again. They've been regularly spawning now about every three weeks. So, um, Going over here is the other flower horn. He's been kind of weird lately. Um, hanging out back in this corner here. Um, he's coming out now because he knows it's feeding him yesterday because he was hanging out back there so hoping he's not sick and he'll take the food here but let's give it a shot and see let's put in a few pieces then we'll put in some veggie krill for these loaches oh yeah he's he's digging it and then the loaches of course And then over here we've got the uh, reddest latest pair. <laughs> she she just hangs out under her tile all day because he's pretty rough on her. But when it's feeding time, she comes out. Let's see, they go absolutely nuts for this stuff. A few more pieces. too much there oh well um, since I got the large cichlid that's what I was feeding these guys um, in my hand I'll, I'll go over to these two tanks as well um, the umbies get large cichlid excuse me I'm taking the top off so this is uh, Optimus and Matrix they, uh, they've been doing real well lately. Um, they've had a few spawns in the last few months, and I'm growing out some fry. He's just really becoming a beast, really digging this fish. She's, uh, she's no slouch either. But they've been showing uh, pre-spawning behavior again lately, doing a lot of lip locking and tail flapping and heads, head shaking. So, um, go ahead and put in some large cichlids for these guys. She'll wait for him to have some first and then she'll come over and grab some. But uh, yeah, these guys are doing real well. Couldn't be happier with this pair. Um, not much else really to say about them at this point, I guess. But in a few months or so, maybe a month, two months, I should have some fry big enough to sell if anyone's interested. But um, down below here, sorry the camera works probably not as good this time. I'm switching back and forth with the camera in the bottom. So, this is the Dovi pair, and if a lot of you guys know the history of this pair, they've been real finicky eaters, and for the most part, um, they only ate krill. Uh, when Mike had them, for the most part, they would only eat krill, and then when I got them, really for about the first year, they would only eat krill, and just a couple weeks ago now, for whatever reason, um, they started taking large cichlids, I kind of stopped on the krill a little bit, and uh, she she's much more of a 
unpicky eater than he is, but he, he does take the large cichlid now. Not as often, or not as, I don't know what the word would be, with gusto as, as she does, but, um, so that's promising. Um, it's, it's hard sometimes to get a fish off of a certain diet uh, if they're real picky. Other times it's real easy. Um, you know, when I started doing Southern Delight, most of my fish took to it right away. But every so often you get that fish that, for whatever reason, doesn't want to switch. So, But it looks like he's doing real well now, switching to large cichlid. And, uh, you know, we'll just continue to watch that and see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and put this bottle away over here. And then we'll show you what's going on. Last month, um, I forgot to show this group of fish. They were still down here at that point. But these are my Trimat grow outs. Still got them. We just moved them into a bigger tank and last month forgot to show them. Uh, a few of these are really starting to grow like this guy here. He's really just been putting on. Um, what I've been feeding these guys is uh, the Southern Delight Power Feed. Just an awesome food. This is probably the, bit, the best selling Southern Delight food. And I'm showing these in bottles. I do sell the bottles, but I, I specialize in the bulk sales, which is a, a really good deal. Um, I sell it in one pound bags. Um, if you're unfamiliar, a lot of you guys are familiar, so there's no need for me to talk much about that. Down below here is one of the Hadiensis pairs. Also feed them the power feed. Hadiensis can be um, prone to bloat, so you gotta be careful and not overfeed them. Um, so that's what I do with these guys. Never, I never feed them more than once a day. Most of my fish I just feed, well, it depends. Uh, some I feed twice a day, some I feed once a day. Then the other Hadiensis pair, this will probably be the keeper pair if I do get rid of one pair. Um, these guys recently spawned. They ate a lot of the fry, but there still are some in here. And I also been feeding these guys the power feed as well. Wow, splash, they just love it. He just, he's a real crazy eater. He's just got a lot of good personality and stuff. And the fry in there um, catch what comes out of their gills sometimes and um, it's going real well. Down below here is the male moda that I've still got. I'm contemplating moving this guy on. I just don't know that I'm gonna ever find him a female. Plus with some potential future plans coming up in the fish room here, I, I may be out of room, so I may need to get rid of this guy as well as the flower horn, the magma, not the 9.9 .9 confa, but the magma. So, let's see what happens. But I feed this guy either power feed or large cichlid, depending. He gets real freaked out when you're near his tank. Um, but anyway, he's not gonna eat right now. That's okay. Um, the fry area. Up here I've got um, some dovi left. Um, I've been feeding them the nano krill, but they could probably, they're probably big enough now to start taking the uh, marine mix, so I'll probably switch them over to that, but for right now, I've been feeding them nano krill. You can see them just go crazy over it. Got some of these guys available for sale there, just under an inch. Um, some of them are already spoken for here, um, and I'm gonna be shipping them out next week. But um, I do have some available. Down below here are the um, Hadiensis growouts. These are pretty much all spoken for now. I've sold pretty much all of them and they're gonna be shipped out next week. I feed them, these guys, the Nano Curl also. And uh, they love it. These guys are really fun to watch. Um, as these guys have grown out, I really, really dig it. Hopefully we'll get some more spawns uh, so that we can uh, grow out some more and um, have some of these available. And then between these two tanks here I've got, um, this is a group of Midas fry from the first spawn from the pair downstairs here. 
not Cheeto, but Cheeto's brother. There's, I don't know, about eight in here. They're at about a half inch range. I'm probably gonna list these for sale pretty soon um, so that I have some tank space. Next door is their next spawn, and there's a whole bunch of them in here. You can see too what these guys are eating is just a gel food that I make. Um, see it over here as well there it is um, just a gel food that I make I take uh, Southern Delight uh, small cichlid and mix it with Knox gel and water and you make a gel uh, there's plenty of videos out on YouTube uh, showing you how to do that and that's what I've got in all these tanks this this tank here are just a handful of umbies from a couple spawns ago about a half inch in size and then these are their latest spawn from Optimus and Matrix uh, umbies just going to town there. This gel food works good because they can kind of skim at it all day. It does make the tank kind of messy because I'm assuming they must kind of move it around a little bit. You can see all the debris around there, but I do regular water changes like every other day on these, so um, there's no problems there. All right, let's go upstairs and I will show you what we've got going on up there and then we'll end this tour. Okay, so we're upstairs now and we'll show you Cheeto's tank. Um, Cheeto, as you saw in the last video, he did spawn, but they ate all their fry. I, I, and then I put the other female back in because he was really going after the female he spawned with after the fry disappeared. I don't know if she ate him or he ate him or how it went down. But so I've got her in here and it seemed to have calmed things down, but now these two are showing pre-spawning behavior. Her tube, I don't know if you can see it or not, was coming down. Uh, they've been doing a lot of head shaking, hanging out near the pot. Also chasing their reflections, as you can see right here. Um, kind of weird. But, uh, yeah, they're doing real well. Uh, other than that, I'm hoping to get another spawn out of them soon. Uh, Cheeto and both of these females eat large cichlid. That's the old bottle. I just fill it with my bulk food. I don't have to carry bottles up and down stairs all the time. But large cichlid, and they love it as you can see. They go absolutely nuts over it. And then the final tank, I'm going to show you this one again. Start showing and giving regular updates on it. This is the 90 gallon planted. Um, I finally got around to redoing it as you can see. I had really let this tank go and um, sit down here um, co2 can had run out um, I just had neglected it big time and most of the Monte Carlo carpeting was gone or um, in bad shape it had turned not so bright of a green and the stems you can still see some of it uh, we're starting to kind of grow up versus outward and carpeting which is typical uh, of a lot of plants if you don't use co2 so I've cleaned up this tank, I've rescaped it as you can see, I kind of went for the just one sole mountain look. And then I'm going to let the Monte Carlo kind of recarpet it. I was going to buy a new Monte Carlo and start fresh and then I thought, let's see if I can get it to recover what we had. And, and it's doing a good job, it's really showing strides. Um, you can see I've got... Um, You can see I've got uh, the cherry shrimp. Most of these are like painted fire gray. These are the same ones I had in here before. Um, they really graze a lot on these uh, oiko stones that I've formed this mountain structure with. It's kind of cool to see them um, going around on it. And then I've also got the, uh, the cardinal tetras in here as well. So um, there's a little bit of fissidens that I tried to save that I've just kind of put in but I'm gonna probably move that because I've got a little bit different idea on what I'm gonna do to kind of finish this off um, I've got some inert um, eco complete substrate that I'm gonna fill in in all the gaps so that there's no swim throughs so that the shrimp and fish can't be hiding in there but in in turn what it's gonna allow me to do is plant some rock uh, some rocks some plants in some of these areas between the rocks and I'm thinking I might just do Monte Carlo so that it's just kind of got a look, a sparse look of Monte Carlo um, spots throughout the whole structure. But I may try some other plants in there or some other mosses. 
then I may go back to getting some um, AR mini um, and just have some kind of accent points, nice red plants throughout, not to grow a big batch of it, but just kind of throughout the, uh, the structure. But anyway, let's try to get some quick zoom zoom ups here while I end this video. Um, just want to thank everybody again who subscribes. Um, looking forward to a great 2018. Just uh, with the fish community, um, with these YouTube videos, with the Southern Delight sales through Aquatic Support Systems. Um, if you're not already on uh, the Aquatic Support Community Facebook uh, group, make sure you join. It's a great group of people. Go over to the Aquatic Support Systems page and click like. You can buy Southern Delight through my page there or also just emailing me uh, or messaging me on Facebook directly and uh, we'll get you set up. Uh, for international customers, Southern Delight, I do have it on uh, eBay now and we're set up for global shipping. So you can certainly uh, buy it through there as well. But with that being said, uh, I'll let you go. Until next time, take care.